Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to episode two of Aerodynamics and the Cross. I hope you enjoyed episode one, where we looked at a thrust, which is the engine gives the thrust, which is a forward force. And that represents human effort, which the summary of that is, no matter what we're called to do in life, at some point, there has to be some effort on our part. And the promise text is, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. Part two, we're going to look at the opposite of thrust. So thrust is the forward motion, and the opposite is drag, right? It's the backward force. It's basically, uh, according to one scientist, to every action, there's equal or opposite reaction, right? So you have thrust happening to push the airplane forward, to propel it forward, uh, and you have drag that is pulling it backwards. So you might be wondering, what does drag represent? Well, drag represents attacks of Satan, all right? Attacks of Satan. As a Christian, I am a firm believer that we really wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So when it comes to drag, um, I don't know, it's a shortening for the dragon. You know, the devil is called a dragon in Revelation chapter 12. So drag is the attacks of Satan, right? Because whether we like it or not, um, we, we have our human efforts going. We're trying to propel in life. And there will always be challenges and hindrances. And I connect those two. Satan will attack, whether we like it or not. And it's not necessarily because of um, our actions per se, but it's solely because that's what he does. Okay. So I have three Bible verses that I want to share with you to bring this application home that drag the backward force holding us back represents the attacks of Satan himself. He can use individuals, he use different things, etc. but it's solely connected to him pulling us back in life. Uh, uh, Bible verse number one is Job chapter one, verse six to verse 22. We're not going to read it verse by verse, but familiarize yourself with the story. What was happening with Job? Job loves God. He is following God's precepts. Satan now comes to God and say, Job is serving you because of material things. And when you read the story of Job, you realize that Satan could not attack Job because there was a hedge or there was a protection around Job. And he wasn't able to attack Job until God said, okay, I'm going to remove the protective layer from Job, my servant, and I will allow you to attack him. And what happened? He lost his house. He lost property, animals, even his children. Even his very wife asked him to curse God and die. So Job's story shows us that the attacks of Satan is not all the time primarily from Satan himself. He does the work, but God permits him to attack so drag represents the attacks of Satan. And, and if our lives is ordered by the Lord and we, we love God like Job, it's possible that these attacks will be orchestrated or God is the one who will permit Satan to um, challenge our drive to go forward in life. Um, Bible verse number two, John chapter 16 verse 33 john chapter 16 verse 33 and i want to read that one the bible says these things i have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world so notice what jesus is saying in the world you will have trials you will have tribulation why job's story teaches us that God will give Satan permission to attack his children. That's what he's going to do. He will give permission. And you might be wondering, why would God allow Satan to attack me? Well, it's because to every action, 
there's equal or opposite reaction. So God is going to help us to thrust forward, but he will allow Satan to attack us so that his strength can be made perfect in our weakness. For example, you won't know how strong you are until you start lifting things. And the heavier you lift, the more your muscles will expand and grow. So Jesus says in the world, you will have tribulation because he is going to allow Satan to attack our plans, to attack our dreams, to attack our uh, aspirations, whatever it is, he will give Satan permission to cause drug to be a part of our spiritual walk. The third lesson or Bible verse that I would like to share is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. The Bible says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. You see that, beloved friends? God, uh, Paul tells us that God has divinely allowed Satan to buffet him to keep him humble. I know we don't enjoy it. Personally, I don't enjoy it. And a lot of times I question God's leading in my life. But to close, here's my closing thought. Don't be discouraged by the attacks of Satan, right? Because as you keep watching this, you're going to realize that nothing Satan does is going to overpower the strength that God has given you to be sustained. I hope you enjoy episode two, where we looked at drag, which represents the attacks of Satan. Lesson number uh, three will be wait, right? Please keep following, keep watching, and I hope to see you on episode three. God bless, and we'll talk soon.